In this video you will learn about SQL injection. We are going to talk about how it works and what Django does to protect you from it. Here is a quick introduction to SQL. We can use the select keyword, specify a couple of fields separated by a comma and then use the from keyword and then after that specify a table name. So in this case select customer name and contact name from customers. Then we can also select star which means every field from customers. We can also use the WHERE clause, so select everything from customers where city is London. Then we can also use the O keyword to in this case select every customer where the city is London or his contact name is Yang Wang. And using two dashes you can insert comments which is going to be important when we talk about how the injection attack works. Ok so what is an SQL injection? The user injects, as the name already says, part of an SQL query into any input on the website. So it could be either the URL or any input in a form for example. So anywhere where the user can type in anything is where SQL injection could happen, theoretically. Then the query of course is executed on the backend. And then this allows for unintended interactions with the database. Whether that is inserting something or even dropping the entire table, that will also be possible. Here's a quick example. We select everything or every field from customers where the customer name is equal to and then as you can see we have a starting double quote and then we inject the user input and then we enter double quote. So basically the user input gets put in between the two double quotes. And let's say the user were to type in something like Steven as the user input then of course we were to select every field from customers where the customer name is equal to in quotes Steven. But instead of the user actually inputting a customer name which we would want them to do, they input something like a double quote and then all one equals one and then two dashes. So if this gets put into the position we specified in the query, then our resulting query will be select everything or every field from customers where the customer name is equal to an empty string or one equals one and then the rest is a comment. So nowhere, no matter what comes after that it's going to be basically unnecessary or doesn't mean anything for SQL. And this will then result in every customer in the database to be selected because 1 equals 1 is always true. This example is still relatively harmless compared to what you could do. So you really need to guard yourself against this type of attack and really anything we are talking about in this series. So uh, as Gabriel nicely explained, uh, SQL injections are pretty critical vulnerabilities that you need to be aware of as well as you need protection from. The good news is Django automatically provides protection from SQL injections as long as you use most of the SQL, uh, uh, you avoid from creating SQL queries yourself. As we know Django provides an ORM or an object relationship mapper. For instance if you use a model dot use uh, user dot all uh, you would just get a uh, the same effect as running select star from users. And we would strongly recommend that you use the ORM to avoid yourself or from being trapped in the SQL injection attacks. So what we mean by uh, uh, this is if you have a query, if you have to save uh, pick a, a particular city or uh, you know use a form for getting a particular filtered input, please use uh, uh, create uh, the form classes provided by Django and please use the ORM which is provided by Django. Now how do you protect yourself from SQL injections? Um, as always the advice never trust user input applies. Uh, if you are expecting a string uh, of uh, uh, alphabets from your uh, user please check that it does not have anything like unexpected non uh, uh, alphabet characters in that. Uh, if you're expecting a pin code, please ensure that you know uh, uh, only the valid characters in a pin code are there or if you're expecting a phone number, please ensure that it has only numbers. That sort of input uh, checks are always recommended. Next thing is uh, validated with Django forms. So Django forms are created in a way that you know uh, pretty similar to the way you construct a model. Uh, you can define the fields, you can define the uh, data types in a field. Uh, I always recommend uh, 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 you to use the most specific form of uh, field that is possible. For instance, 
uh, you can use a string field everywhere, right? You can use a text field everywhere, but uh, you can uh, you can, for instance, store a URL in a string field. Uh, but I strongly recommend you use the URL field directly because uh, it'll always check uh, the form will uh, the Django form backend will always check whether you have actually submitted a URL, a valid URL, or an email uh, or whatever field that you had picked uh, for that particular case. So uh, please be as strict as possible so that a valid character check can be done. And you know, all these kind of uh, malicious input usually relies on using uh, special characters which have special meanings in certain contexts, uh, which is exactly what a SQL injection attack is. And finally, uh, if possible, you avoid writing uh, SQL queries yourself manually uh, and use the Django ORM instead. Uh, in many cases, you can get by by using the Django ORM. Uh, Django ORM has some known limitations, uh, in which case you can use um, other alternatives, alternative ORMs like SQL Alchemy. Uh, in case you are, uh, you know, uh, having performance issues, uh, you want to do fine tuning. Uh, some people try to um, bypass uh, Django ORM and directly code the most efficient uh, SQL query possible. Uh, but uh, as you just saw, um, it has a lot of uh, caveats that you have to ensure that you are escaping everything properly so that SQL injections don't happen. And you know, a whole lot of checks that Django provides you by default, you're bypassing them when you're using, uh, when you're creating SQL queries by hand. So uh, if you want to use it, uh, uh, make sure that you're a very, uh, advanced user, uh, you are aware of all the potential pitfalls, uh, you are aware of what possible exploits are possible and only use it in, in a very uh, specific case. Uh, in this case, we are talking about optimization. Thanks for watching the video. To find out more about Arun and his book, make sure to check out the links in the description. If you found the video useful, don't hesitate to drop a like and share it around. We'll see you inside of the next episode. Take care and cheers.